Hello, welcome to our basic NMR operation training video series. These videos are a supplement to our one-on-one -on -one training. Do not attempt to operate the instruments before undergoing the user training. You can schedule a training session with the link on the facility's webpage shown a little later. These training videos will focus on the operation of the Bruker Avance 3 HD 300 MHz spectrometer. This instrument is located in room I, in the GSRC 108 suite. This is on the ground floor of GSRC and the entrance to the suite is in the back hallway that you will also find the CAS stockroom. The rest of the facility's instruments are located in room D of the suite. These include two 400 MHz instruments, and a 500 MHz system. The first 400, we call it the 400A, runs the same software as the 300, so this video will also provide a guide for its operation. There are some slight differences between the two systems and we will highlight them in a separate video. Please see the facility staff before you attempt to run the 400A. Let's take a quick tour of the 300 lab. The most prominent feature of an NMR system is the superconducting magnet. The magnet contains a solenoid with windings running parallel to the floor. An opening, called the bore, runs the full length of the magnet's doer or cryostat. Within the bore a probe is mounted from the bottom. This probe detects the NMR signals that we collect for each experiment. Samples are inserted into the bore from the top. Attached to the front of the magnet is an automated sample changer. This allows for queuing of samples and full automated and unattended operation. To the right of the magnet is the NMR console that produces radio frequency excitation pulses and processes the returning NMR signals. A computer workstation running dedicated software is how the user interacts with the instrument and the data it collects. Remember the NMR facility is considered a chemistry laboratory, so health and safety rules apply here. It is important that all users understand the safety rules specific to the facility before they access the lab. Users can view these rules and other useful information from the facility's web page. The easiest way to find our web page is the search option on the University of South Carolina's home page. Enter NMR and hit return. Our page should be the first result. You can also find the facilities page from the Chemistry and Biochemistry Department's home page, following the path. Research. Core Facilities. NMR Facility. The left column on the facility's web page contains links for information about the instruments, contact information for the staff and the training request form. In the right-hand column there are important links for users. At the top is a link to the online scheduling system, called FACES. We will go into details in a separate video. There is also a link to download our Bruker Topspin manual that covers in more details the information that we are covering in these videos. Please download and read this short manual before your training session. Finally, there is a link for the NMR facility's safety policies. Download and read this document prior to training. There is a consent form on the last page that you must sign and return during the training session. I will point out the more important items. You need to be familiar with the lab setup and where you can find important safety equipment. The 300 is located in room 108I. Your primary emergency exit should be the same door you entered. However, should it be impossible to use this exit, there is an additional emergency exit in the back of the main lab in 108D. Fire extinguishers are mounted by most doorways in the facility including the 300 lab. There is an emergency shower in the wet lab, room 108C. Eye wash stations are located by the sinks in the wet lab and in the mass spec facility room, 108A. First aid kit and additional safety equipment can be found on a bookshelf down the hall from the 300 lab. With staff approval 108C is available for sample preparation during normal business hours. No after-hour sample preparation is allowed since 108C will be locked. Therefore, there is no access to the shower and eye wash station. However, we have an eye wash bottle available for after-hours emergencies. This bookshelf is marked with these signs. The shelf includes the first aid kit, a small chemical cleanup kit, a small chemical waste container, containers for broken glass and sharp items, the eye wash bottle and a container for contaminated spinners. You should never enter the facility with gloves. 
Gloves may protect you, but if they are contaminated they are spreading this to everything you touch, like door handles, spinners, keyboards, computer mice and pens. Instead you should be washing your hands before leaving your lab. Dirty hands will transfer to the NMR spinners, which will contaminate the spinner stator. The outside of your NMR tubes must also be clean of any contamination. Dirty NMR tubes will transfer to the NMR probe. Repair costs could easily reach several thousands of dollars due to such abuse. Health and safety requires all chemicals be transported with secondary containment. This includes NMR tubes. Common containers include cylinders and flasks. However, cardboard mailing tubes have the advantage of being unbreakable. Either way, put some absorbent paper at the bottom to cushion the tubes and to be handy to clean any spills. NMR magnets have some specific safety issues that should be understood by all users. First are the stray fields that extend from the magnets. All the magnets in the facility are what are considered unshielded magnets. This means the stray fields extend far into the lab. For the 300 the radial 10 gauss line extends about 1.5 meters from the magnet. The 5 gauss line is more than 2 meters. The stronger magnets in the facility have significantly larger stray fields since the main fields are stronger. These stray fields are an extreme hazard to people with cardiac pacemakers and other surgical implants. People with such devices should never enter the facility and should contact the staff to discuss their options. Stray fields also pose danger as metal objects will be drawn to the magnet and could cause injury to a user and the equipment. No ferrous metal item, like gas cylinders, tools and paper clips should be taken into the lab. Magnetic media such as credit cards and ATM cards should also be kept away from the magnet since the field could erase their contents. Watches and phones should also not be brought up to the magnet. NMR magnets are superconductive at very low temperatures. They use liquid helium and liquid nitrogen to stay cold and remain at field. However, rarely they instantaneously lose their field in an event called a quench. During a quench the energy stored in the magnet is released as heat into the liquid helium. This causes the helium to boil off rapidly and exit the cryostat. The helium is lighter than air so it usually stays closer to the ceiling. However, it can displace all the oxygen in a room, so if you should see a rapid release of gas from the magnet, like in this video, you should exit the lab immediately and contact the NMR staff. Remember the NMR facility is a lab, be aware of your surroundings and respect the magnets and their fringing fields. Also, read and follow any posted signs in the room. Thanks for watching.